And you know who that was. That was Maggie Brown. And I saw Maggie Brown just recently at the African Festival of the Arts over in the park on 51st and Cottage Grove. And she was performing beautifully there, as she always does in every venue where I've seen her perform. And she has the obligation to do that because she is the progeny of my dear friend, the late, the late, and I don't like that word, Oscar Brown Jr. And this little girl that he wrote a song about, right. My Little Maggie, Maggie you know, and described her perfectly. Mm -hmm. I don't think she's changed at all, even mm -hmm. though she's now a, a grown up with some children of her own. How are you, Maggie I'm Brown? Great. I'm glad to be here with you. It's I'm, been too long. It has been, it certainly has yeah. been too long. You know, when you sang um, at, at Washington Park, one of the songs that you sang was a tribute to your father. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that, um, and you said this yourself, that you don't mind at all being associated with that legacy. You mm -hmm. know, you don't mind being known as Oscar Brown Jr.'s daughter. No, it's but you do have you do have your own gift and your mm -hmm. own talent and your own track record. You know, I I was I still love from my window Thank you. as one of the my very favorite CDs. I always say it's timeless music. You know, and, and no matter when it's the first time someone heard it, you know, it's still it's it's not it do, doesn't date itself. Summer in the city, what I sang. Did you, know? you write that yourself? Oh no, Summer in the City is from is one of Dad's tunes, okay. as well as from my window. Okay, I helped write on the from my window CD. I, w I was very young at my writing stages, so I helped my brother on one or two of the tunes. One of the tunes only for the passion, but mostly uh, nine tunes by Oscar Jr. and two by Oscar the Third. Okay, yeah. okay. You though you have written some some songs. I've written of some your own. songs. Certainly done some things since then. And you perform some of your own. Yes, I've been performing um, some of these originals. Um, haven't recorded them yet. That's mm -hmm. the thing to do is to get another CD out. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. I think that I was standing around the park for a long time waiting for your CDs to come back because you were followed by Bobby Humphrey. That's right. And and her CDs were on the table, and I was kept standing around saying, "You know well, what it is, right? I didn't, I didn't I didn't go to the right place in terms of where, you know, I, I set up." So okay. Sorry about that. All right. Well, all right. Mm -hmm. Just I, I forgive you. Okay. I will forgive you for everything yeah. because you are such a talented person. Talk about your family. Talk a little bit about the family from whence you came, and then we'll mm -hmm. talk about the young lady that you are today. Okay. Well, as far as um, my upbringing, um, my mother, in my mother's household, there were four children, though okay. my father had seven. Okay. But my nuclear family was uh, Oscar III and two sisters mm -hmm. and myself. And uh, grew up close to my father's sister. My auntie lived next door. And just a few blocks up was uh, my grandparents, my mm -hmm. father's family, mm -hmm. uh, parents. And so that meant I was close to them. And I'm very glad, you know, because I was the baby of m my mother's youngest. And um, so, you know, my grandparents, they died in 90, respectively. Both of them ended up passing away in 1990. Okay. But I got to know my grandparents I, at one point after my mother died when I was pretty young. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, she died in 81. And I ended up going to live with my grandparents eventually and sort of help take care of my grandmother. You can't just say your grandparents. I'm sorry, like, Oscar Brown Sr. Thank you very Oscar much. C. Who Brown was? Sr., who was a real estate man, an attorney. Um, he was one of the black intelligentsia that worked towards starting a 49th state in the union when, when there were only 48 states in the nation mm -hmm. back in the day. So, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that, that um, he and his brothers came up from Edwards, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And really they went to Howard University and you know got their education which was unheard of oh it was unheard of and he was really young like he came out of college very early i mean he came out of high school went to college very early well before 18 like might have been 16 mm -hmm. heading off to college and you know became a porter and and just you know worked really really hard and a dishwasher and he wrote a book called buy a thread this is my grandfather mm -hmm. and right people you know my father's famous because he's in show business and entertainment but my grandfather you know certainly laid that foundation 
as my father says in his documentary, he said he was a race man, meaning, mm -hmm. you know, he was for the black guy, and if mm -hmm. they both had, if there were two black guys fighting, then he was for the one with the black trunks, or, you know, he just, <laughs> you know, he just, and you know, fair as he could be, you mm -hmm. know, soft hair and everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know mm -hmm. that really we have um, various cultures, you know, mm -hmm. different races in us, but uh, he was a man that felt like um, we must, those of us who do make it um, a sin to have some decent lifestyle mm -hmm. from the sharecropper lifestyle that he's he's aware of. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have an obligation right. to pull the, the others of us up to help right. the masses right. Right. to also... Um, to fight those battles they may not know to fight or they may not exactly. have the strength to fight. Exactly. Right, right. So that, that laid the groundwork, obviously, for the, 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 the political aspect mm -hmm. and the activist and the, you know, just humanitarian mm -hmm. approach that Oscar, I think, took to his music. Yes, and while he, he was supposed to go into real estate and law, he mm -hmm. did not have that inclination. Right. And <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, he wrote his first play and, and, you know, got his first deal and started going in the direction of show business. And then, you know, the seeds planted in him impacted people in many parts of the world. And some of those people are still living. And some of those people shared it with their children. And so while he never, even though Oscar used to, um, open for Miles Davis or Bill mm -hmm. Cosby used to open for him. Well, those people went on to ascend to have a certain level of uh, what familiarity people their popularity. household name popularity mm -hmm. and household name. Mm -hmm. He didn't become that household name, but those who he did touch, he, he touched pretty deeply. Mm -hmm. And um, so that love is still out there, seemingly for me and my my sister Africa performs too, and you know for my family really, it's, mm -hmm. it's out there. You mm -hmm. know that. Um, that care for people, that care for our condition, mm -hmm. that uh, feeling of taking a responsibility with whatever you're given, whether it's a law practice on the south side of Chicago in the you know 50s and mm -hmm. so forth, mm -hmm. or whether it's you know an opportunity to be up on Rush Street with your show in the 60s, mm -hmm. or instead to maybe turn to working with gangs in a show, mm -hmm. and um, that that makes. Um, that endears people, you mm -hmm. know, that's mm -hmm. endearing. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm blessed to feel that love still. You know, I, I, I thought a long and hard because I was trying to think of what to call Oscar Brown Jr. I'd been thinking about that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, all the, the old tired terms didn't work. Mm -hmm. And I finally recognized that what he was was a griot. Mm -hmm. You know, he was mm -hmm. a griot. An urban jolly. Mm -hmm. He was an African who preserved the culture in song and poetry mm -hmm. and music and all those forms which would make it up, it w which would make it appealing to people. Mm -hmm. That was what he was for us. And we didn't, know, you know, we, I think we saw him as an entertainer. Mm -hmm. You know, but when I listened to some of his, his, uh, his poetry, especially I have on a CD mm -hmm. with my obituary, I mm -hmm. have On the Beach. You have, yeah, On This Beach. On this, be Ooh, this beach, I, 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 too much? listen, uh. listen, listen. <laughs> yeah. There was uh. no facet of life that he did not address. I yeah. mean, he, when I think of his range, mm -hmm. you know, I think he he was every man. He had every experience that a black man could have on this planet. Except he didn't see that man become president, didn't see an African American become president. <laughs> no. I would have loved to have just right. witnessed daddy well, witness that. Yeah, I wonder what he would have written. the things he would have written. Yeah. Plenty. Yes, I'm yes. sure. But I think that probably one reason why he did not gain the notoriety of some other lesser uh, uh, Less prolific, figures. shall we say, because, you know. I, is because I think he was too socially conscious. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, I, you, have you, to, you have to make it real palatable. If it don't taste good to people, they're not going to well, want to drink for, it. Well, it's not, it's, I don't think it was the people who 
to whom it didn't taste good. I think well, it was the control. powers that be. That's, that's those people who who didn't who control. Who, yeah, what decides what gets right. on air, what gets up. Because I, when I met your father, I was in very excellent company. Mm -hmm. I was with Gus Savage okay. and Margaret Burroughs and Frank London Brown. Anyway. These are people older, that you, but, but you could have they could have passed mm -hmm. through your house mm -hmm. on one day or another. Mm -hmm. And that group, uh, Bennett Johnson and, and uh, Brunetta Howell and Al Janney and, and really what one would call radical, you know, these people, if you're talking about race people, mm. these people just were just staunchly pro-black people. Mm -hmm. They weren't necessarily opposed to any other people, right. but they mm -hmm. were just, the welfare of our own people mm -hmm. was paramount, mm -hmm. and it was, you know, they would put their lives on the line, mm -hmm. they would put their livelihoods on the line, right. and so consequently anybody having a relative like that would see some lean days because there would have right. to be some days when there would not be revenue coming in the mm -hmm. door. Uh, but these were the kinds of people and when they had conversations, Gwendolyn Brooks, mm -hmm. when they had conversations, these conversations were deep yes. conversations right. and they were talking about social issues and they were, mm -hmm. they were well aware of what was going on not only in the city but in the world, mm -hmm. these people had had oh, understanding where? of the international scene mm -hmm. and how it impacted the local scene. Mm -hmm. And so to, and I was a very young woman, but just, just to be in their company mm -hmm. and to see the kinds of things that they talked about and they took stands mm -hmm. about and to see each one of these people doing something just major and, and frequently, you know, getting uh, lambasted or bad press or mm -hmm. in some way being uh, having an obstacle thrown before them mm -hmm. because they were men you right. know they were men mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know it was a great it was a great pleasure to be you know I was snatched up out of naivete mm, okay right mm -hmm. you know because you yeah, could just walk around you know thinking that it's the you world is just some little thing right right, right. Right, for but the no, no. You mm -hmm. get to you get to learn that what is happening to your people is the deliberate. It is not an accident, mm -hmm. and it isn't going to stop if you don't oppose it. Mm -hmm. So you you come from that legacy, you know. And I don't know. I I sometimes think uh, we were away from our children too too often mm -hmm. because we were if we weren't somewhere trying to put on some project like launch the Chicago League of Negro Voters or get somebody elected into some independent um, uh, candidate into some public office mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. something else. And how did you feel? Did you feel a void? Did you feel that your father was away more than you would have wanted him to be? Did you feel? Oh, of course. Yeah. Do you miss Absolutely. him? Absolutely. Oh yeah, I, I missed him when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And um, it's funny, he had that little Maggie song you mentioned earlier, he says, um, then in the morning she light, uh, lights up like a Christmas tree, mm -hmm. claps her little hands with glee when she recognizes me. Mm -hmm. Not so much because he's unrecognizable, but when, he, when I, I can imagine that, you know, when I would see him because he would be away a lot. Mm -hmm. And when he would maybe, you know, be there when I woke up or something, it was like, daddy, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because, Yes, of course, I longed to be with him, and he was on the road a lot. And then he didn't really live with us. Once I became three years old, he, you know, he mm -hmm. and Gene were together. And so mm -hmm. he didn't live in my home, and it was more relegated to summers or, mm -hmm. you know, some time on school breaks. Mm -hmm. if, if show business was going good, he could mm -hmm. send for us mm -hmm. um, from Chicago to be with him wherever he was. Mm -hmm. Spent summers in San Francisco or New York as a young child. So, you know, that, that was nice um, to experience what he was doing, mm -hmm. you know, to sort of be on the road with him mm -hmm. sometimes um, as long as school was out. Because when school was in, of course, we were home with our mother, mm -hmm. Maxine, I should mm -hmm. call her name. Mm -hmm. and, yes, um, that. So it was, yeah, there was longing and, and really I was the youngest and my, the next sibling was six years older, the next one eight years, 11 years older, so everybody was a good deal older than me. Mm -hmm. And they could definitely leave me at the house and they'd be gone mm -hmm. off doing their thing. And, 
so I'd be at home mm -hmm. wishing I could be on the road. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. day finally came and I ran away with the circus. Did you? Mm -hmm. Tell me about so running away with the circus. How did you decide you could run away with the circus? Well, really, I had gone, um, I had started college U of I in Urbana. Mm -hmm. My mother and s oldest sister had driven me down there. And um, no time, if, if I was delivered in August to school, by October, my mother just took suddenly ill. As far as we knew, it was suddenly ill. Mm -hmm. And um, I happened to be coming home uh, for the weekend and to see my friends performing. And uh, my mother had just gone in the hospital the night before. And long story short, after 13 days, she passed mm -hmm. from something called multiple myeloma, cancer of the bone marrow. Mm. So of course, that was very shocking and, 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 and devastating. And but, you know, I knew she wanted me to be in college. She wanted me, you know, to continue my studies. Mm -hmm. But I had already expressed it. I did, U of I, Urbana just did not fit this city girl. It was mm -hmm. too many soybean fields I passed on the way there, and mm -hmm. it just wasn't working out. Mm -hmm. So I had actually gone there thinking I'd study agriculture because I was encouraged from certain family members, some family members that, you know, show business is too unstable, and, you know, you want mm -hmm. to do, get to go study a real business kind of thing. So I went there for that and I didn't last long. And that summer, my mother had passed in October and that summer when I came home from the break, um, I worked on a play with daddy mm -hmm. and got pretty much bitten by the bug as the play that turned out to be Great Nitty Gritty. Okay. It helped in, in its development of vo vocal parts and mm -hmm. auditioning young people. And it was time to go back to school in the fall. So psh, I went, but I did not stay long. Mm -hmm. I rented an ugly duckling van. <laughs> <laughs> and packed my stuff <laughs> and headed back to the city mm -hmm. and rode up to the church where they were performing the show that night and just -da -da -da, I'm back mm -hmm. I'm here for the show business mm -hmm. and that was uh, that was one of my ideas of that's kind of running away with from the with the circus although mm -hmm. I ran home <laughs> and another time is I had gotten into Columbia which was a much better fit Columbia mm -hmm. College you know right much better fit but then this opportunity came along for us to do a show my father and I and Jean and another young man, Morris Gearing, to do a show in New York in the village mm -hmm. and perform for a month at this place. So, of course, my father was like, are you kidding? You're, that, that's what those kids are going to school for. You know you want to you know, come mm -hmm. do this show with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the school was like, oh, you'll never work again if you, you know, drop out now and mm -hmm. you'll never work in this town kind of thing. I remember. Really? Yeah, Bill Russo, he tried to, he wanted me to feel real bad because I was having to leave his play. You know, mm -hmm. I was casting a play and that was a big deal. But that was school on Michigan Avenue, and this was the village in New York mm -hmm. doing a, a show, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. pretty close to Broadway. Right. So <laughs> I went for it. Okay. That is definitely running away with the circus. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so after that then? After that, just all these years have passed. And all these years I have, have passed. Um, had the opportunity not only, you know, I cherish having work with my father on stage. I mm -hmm. cherish having work with my father and my brother and I. Mm -hmm. You know, those are just magic moments because they can't be repeated now. Well, you know, I have that Oscar Brown, have you and Oscar and Africa mm -hmm. live. Yeah, we're live. Oh, my Lord. Thank goodness that, that got CD, done. That CD, that CD is just marvelous. That's the one with this beach on it. Oh, mm -hmm. that's the, oh, mm -hmm. he, I mean, he, Every single, I just listen to it over and over, over again. Every mm -hmm. single piece mm -hmm. is so excellent. Mm -hmm. And then, you it know. It was a brilliant night. You know, it was just a magnificent night. It was a, a magnificent he hit the audience. Stage. Dad I was, was like, there. ooh, this is marvelous. He <laughs> right. The stage it was crowded. <laughs> right. It was packed. That was right. the first time I, I ever produced anything where we had to turn people away, you know. Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. Joan got that kind of success recently, mm -hmm. but uh, man, that was, that was very incredible. It was a magical night. And I'll tell you something. It's funny, uh, I'm probably going to have to do a book or something about, I guess, my life or something about what this all is, my experience um, being in my family. But My Little Maggie seems to be like, of course, it's my theme song because mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. inspired it. And we would sing it. And do you know that that night we, when we sang it at the club for the recording, we had no plans of doing it. The really? band hadn't, hadn't rehearsed it. Our MD M Miguel de la Serna, you know, he had played it once before, who knows when, way before. Right. We had never played it with the bassist, never played it with the drummer. But uh, the spirit was just that he was, dad was feeling all right. proud and he was right. like, oh, I want to sing the little Maggie song. You right. know? Okay. And he turned to Miguel, he's like, can we do Maggie? And Miguel looked at Yosef and was like, 
something, something, and told him a couple little indications of a key and a vibe of the feeling, and you would never know. I never. And at the never end, we're guessed. both crying, and we're both, you know, we're just in each other's ear, and I could hear, you mm -hmm. know, I could just, I could mm -hmm. just feel the magic. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm very glad it got done. I'm very glad it got done because it was to be uh, the last recording that 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 was captured of Oscar Brown Jr. Well, I can tell you it was just marvelous. It was, yeah. you know, you like to and see. And I'm glad my sister, you know, yeah. Africa Brown was on You like too. to see, you, you know, your, you have friends and you know about their children mm -hmm. and you like to see their children reflect them, sure. you know. Right. And that, you, is, that is a nice thing. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's a nice thing. It's wonderful, yeah. you know, to mm -hmm. know them and then later to find that they have children mm -hmm. who, you know, didn't, the, as they say, the apple don't fall far mm -hmm. from the tree mm -hmm. and you all show sure didn't fall far from mm -hmm. the tree. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's just wonderful that you're carrying on that tradition, but I don't think you could help yourself because it's probably in your DNA. Yes, it's not that all my siblings went into show business, but ever since I was little, I knew, I thought that's what I wanted. You well, know, you know, some, some children could be turned off from the profession that their parent is in because they may sense that that was some sort of rival. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's my parent hadn't been doing that, mm -hmm. then they would have had more time with me. So mm -hmm. sometimes that doesn't work too well. And then, I mean, I'm, I was blessed to have a, a voice that's, you know, mm -hmm. pleasant to listen to. Mm -hmm. Everybody doesn't have to get that, you know. I know. And that's why I feel like, you know, you're supposed to do something with it that would uh, would be more of an uplifter. So what it, what are you going to be doing soon? Soon, I'm really into, um, I was already into Abby Lincoln's music in last mm -hmm. March of 09, no, March of 2010. I did this concert through the Jazz Institute called Maggie Sings Abby. Mm -hmm. And it's that I had recorded a couple of songs with Abby in 99 on her Holy Earth. So I've always done a couple tunes of Abby's usually in my repertoire anyway. Mm -hmm. But I just, you know, decided I really wanted to do a full show of all Abby, comp Abby Lincoln compositions. Mm -hmm. So that came about and Abby was already, you know, ill and, um, you know, not performing anymore. Mm -hmm. It looked like the last recording she made was probably going to be the last recording. And so now this being later in 2010 and Abby just passed away in August, mm -hmm. um, I will continue, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really, there's just something about her songs that I really love singing them. You know, Abby Lincoln was, um, to me like a folk singer, mm -hmm. you know, um, the the songs that she sang were not run of the mill songs, mm -hmm. and they were all so f full of meaning and mm -hmm. so so full of thought. And the first time I knew about Abby Lincoln was when she made the movie uh, Nothing But a Man, mm -hmm. and and uh, that I, I never imagined that she was a, an artist, you know. Right. Well, and at that point, I don't know how much she was singing. Maybe I she know didn't that know she it started herself. out acting. Okay, you know, but then, um, of course, she also hooked up with Max Roach, ended up right. marrying Married him, him, and mm -hmm. she and Oscar and Max did the mm -hmm. Freedom Now Suite, and right. you know, I guess I know her career took some shifts, but um, she finally found her voice, and though she appeared in what a, a Spike Lee movie or a Tyler Perry movie, she appeared in a movie, Crooklyn or something after that. But other than that, you know, it wasn't much mm -hmm. in the way of acting. It was mm -hmm. the singing and the composition, right, right, the composing right, right, the music. Right. And she was actually a painter. She would make dolls. She was an artist uh, on several levels, actually. Really? Really? Yeah, and times I, I was kind of surprised to, I, I wasn't surprised that Oscar, you know, at, uh, related to Abby. But when I found out that you did, you know, oh, because wow. you, that's not your generation. Totally not my generation. So, you know, you but she, way boy, back. she took a liking to me. And I mean, anytime I've seen her and been aware of her music, um, and especially to see her on stage, mm -hmm. that was really phenomenal. Mm -hmm. to see her in the studio, and then a couple times went to the Blue Note, saw her here once, and uh, it's just something the way she puts it. And so she saw me perform with Dad in New York one year mm -hmm. and felt like, she thought what I was doing was right on point. Mm -hmm. She liked that I was phrasing and not trying to over sing and just simply telling the story because certainly that's her style. Mm -hmm. And uh, she invited me to sing on the Holy Earth CD. Okay. And um, I'll go and sing, raise my voice 
in tribute to to Abby at her memorial service in New York, and I couldn't be. I know you are just. I mean, more proud, more right, honored. Right. I'm just. I feel so blessed. It's a, it's a, it's a prayer answered, really. Yeah. You know that. Um, though I know I was close with Abby, and Abby close to me. Mm -hmm. But uh, at one point, I didn't necessarily know her family members to contact them or see. Well, mm -hmm. how come I can't, you know, get in touch with her anymore? Because mm -hmm. she at that point was in the hospital. Right. But uh, somehow God saw to it, and the, the <laughs> connection was no, kept. not somehow. God saw to it, answered mm -hmm. my prayers. Mm -hmm. I got that call. I got to see Abby in her nursing home before mm -hmm. she got away a couple of different occasions. Mm -hmm. And um, because we would otherwise talk on the phone, and once she could not be at home, and I couldn't reach her, I was like, man, I can't. She can't just get out of here, and I never see her again, mm -hmm. and never express how much I love her again, and how much her music has touched me and others that I'm aware of, and mm -hmm. I look forward to sharing more of it. Mm -hmm. So I got to tell her that, mm -hmm. and I'm thankful. Well, you know, I'm I'm glad to know that you are you know, uh, are conscious of the need to preserve the things that are of value to us. Mm -hmm. You know, because I think Abby flew over some people's heads. There oh, are sure. many people that you can mention Abby Lincoln to, and if they know her at all, they'll know her from the movie. Right. And they won't, they won't and know. And there's the real emotional side of what she does, too. You know, right. there's some people who are like, oh, it's too deep, I don't want to, you know, I'll, it might make me cry if I listen to that song. Um, but yes, and, and, and it's funny, Abby would often, always encourage me to write my own song, you know, mm -hmm. sing your own song, write a song, you know, that relates mm -hmm. to you and your life. Mm -hmm. In other words, not so much singing my father's song and singing mm -hmm. everybody else's songs, mm -hmm. which of course she started out more so doing, singing other people's songs. But mm -hmm. once she got, she got it, mm -hmm. she was like, oh no, this is the way to go. Mm -hmm. And I respect that, I appreciate that advice, mm -hmm. and I have done some more writing, but um, what can I say? I, I do not mind being one of those who just sort of carries the banner, not so much has to remake the flag. But you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just in that, I, yeah. writing is beautiful, and, mm -hmm. and, and I do want to write more. Mm -hmm. But I certainly don't mind singing an Abbey tune and a good Oscar tune and a good Bobo Brown tune. You right, know, right. In every right. concert. And you should do that. <laughs> and you should do that. Yeah. You know, I um, sometimes when, when I do uh, uh, talks or classes or whatever it is I do, um, I find myself talking about various scholars, uh, some of whom are known, some of whom are not well known, some of, who, some of uh, whom have work that is not well understood. Mm -hmm. And I almost feel like it's my obligation to make you know these people, mm -hmm. you know. Because you, you've had, you have, just lived, pass us by. you have lived with giants, you know, in every generation we have had giants among us. We have had uh, people who were singular. I mean, nobody like them mm. on the planet at that particular moment mm -hmm. doing what they do, saying what they say, right. the way they saying it, and at, that, at the right time and in the right place. And it's, it just seems a shame that we just um, keep remaking the flag. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, got, we have a flag. Mm -hmm. Let us wave it high. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I just, um, I love to make people aware, for example, of the work of Kiari T.H. Cheatwood, mm -hmm. who as far as I'm concerned, is among the greatest African scholars that ever lived on this planet. Mm. And he is well known in Africa, mm -hmm. but not, he lived here. In Chicago? Almost not in, he in lived for a short States. time okay. in, in Chicago, but he lived here most of his life, but he is a very low key. Mm. He's written, I think, about 20 books. Mm -hmm. So if you Google him, if you Google him, all this stuff jumps up. Say his name again. His name is Kiari, K-I-A-R-R-I. Mm -hmm. And then he has, his middle initials are T-H. Mm -hmm. And then Cheatwood, C-H-E-A-T-W-O-O-D. Mm -hmm. um, 
he's on, he was on in relationship with Asa Hilliard and wow. Chancellor Williams sure. and everybody that you ever heard of who you regard as being, uh, you know, a learned person, mm -hmm. you know, but yet somehow he flies on the radar. Mm -hmm. And so I never miss an opportunity to point out that before, uh, that, you know, someone who is writing this now and putting forth this argument or this com concept, he has already written, a, he wrote a book about that 20 years before, you know. Mm -hmm. And so right. it's, 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 you have to, if you know the value, you have to make certain that you share that mm -hmm. with people. So for you to, to give Abby another forum you know, to give her another opportunity to be experienced, to be mm -hmm. witnessed, to be That's known, right. is right. a wonderful thing for you to do. And especially since you are a little Maggie, mm -hmm. you know, you're not even you're not even supposed to know right. Abby Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Lincoln. But luckily, yeah. you had that father. That's right. Who was out Gave there knowing everybody. That's right. Yep. Yeah. And I think your father probably knew every conscious person in this town and probably mm. in, in this country and maybe mm. beyond. I'm sure that just as uh, Dr. Margaret Burroughs was a devotee of Paul Robeson, mm. I know your father was I as well. I love Paul Robeson too. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Very much. See, and when you think, when you think of the kinds of people that they looked up to, see, mm -hmm. these were not, they were not lightweight people, Maggie, right. you know? So you mm -hmm. gotta bring it when you go, if you go, Haul off and do mm -hmm. Abby Lincoln. Yeah, you know. Oh yeah, I have a seven-piece group that uh, includes a vibraphonist, saxophone, mm -hmm. and trumpet, and those are the young lines. Mm -hmm. And man, Curtis Robinson on the guitar, and Sean Wallace on piano. My bass and drums varies, but just it's it's really nice to, um, you know, when you're on a festival, you have 50 minutes and mm -hmm. you have to get your show boom succinct. Mm -hmm. But it's nice when you have. Uh, a set where you can really spread out and let the guys take solos mm -hmm. and, and they have such a fun time with their interplay mm -hmm. you know because they're all good they all enjoy the music and I really enjoy exposing the, the three younger cats I mean they're pretty young they're early 20s or you know mm -hmm. one might have just turned 21. What are you talking about they the three younger cats? The you, three, three you, younger cats in my group. Cause you're I'm not, not one old of enough to be talking yeah, referring yeah. to people time as the by, three younger oh cats. <laughs> anyway they um they enjoy, they really um, are enjoying this music. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't have taken this close a look at these tunes. Mm -hmm. But they are something for a saxophone or a trumpet or a vibraphonist to sink their teeth into just like it, it's mm -hmm. something for a vocalist to sink her teeth mm -hmm. into. So uh, yeah, it's, it's just fun. Yeah. It's just fun. I hope that we'll be able to tour with it more. I, of course, would need to record. It's been forever mm -hmm. since I made a CD. I'm mm -hmm. praying that I'm forging a relationship that would allow you know, the resource to get some recording done. Well, here's here's where we had to talk about some real stuff. This this thing about resources, you know, it costs money to do the very things that we're talking about now. Mm -hmm. You can't you you can't go into a studio. You have to buy studio time. Right. You can't ask musicians to go and help you to make a CD. Musicians have to they yeah, have families. That's right. You have a family. You right. have three children. Yes. Right. Right. So yes, that's when when that's where resources comes up. Whereby you have to um, you'd have to forge a relationship at the studio, mm -hmm. or you have to have some kind of whether you if you don't have deep pockets, then you're going to have to have some kind of benefactor or a sponsor or someone that's interested in investing, mm -hmm. uh, so that the production can get done. Mm -hmm. And once the production is done and it's pressed up and you take it to market. Mm -hmm. Then, if you do the if you do your homework, if you you know market it properly, mm -hmm. then you should be able to pay people back, mm -hmm. pay back investors mm -hmm. and so forth, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully the thing flourish. So, um, yeah, there's there's time, there's money, and but then there's also time. And now my youngest is seven, and so uh, you know he's. He can cook his own dinner. He can handle it. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah I, I can. I can. Um, I guess turn my attention a little more toward these uh, musical career uh, priorities. Right. Whereas the three boys have been 
the needed priority up right. till now. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, with a, as, as I noticed, because my daughter is an artist. Mm, I love Deborah's work. I, I love her work as well, but I'm biased and I know it. <laughs> but the, the thing that, that I know is that it, you, you all are very irregular folk, mm. meaning that you cannot have the kind of uniform schedules, you know, right. um, is that that makes it very difficult unless somebody is going to to volunteer to assist you with your children, right. Right. because you may have to be up all night. Mm -hmm. You know, you may have to sleep crazy hours, right. work crazy hours. Mm -hmm. You can't just inspiration just does not come when you get a minute. Right. You know, when the kids are watching television and right, doing their homework, right. you know, and so that that has got to be a rivalry, you mm. know, going on between your responsibilities as someone's parent right. and your responsibilities as someone with a gift mm -hmm. that also has to be nurtured. It has to be nurtured so and appreciated. Yeah. How do you, how, how, what do you say to yourself? How do you get rid of the guilt? that I know you have to sometimes feel when you are neglecting one or the other because something has to be always sitting on the back burner. Yeah. And I don't know, do I get over it? Um, you know, I give thanks. I thank God for, for all that I'm given because I was telling you earlier that, you know, I haven't really had time to solicit engagements. I haven't had time to promote myself. I do not have management agency, any of that. Mm -hmm. And so anything I'm doing, you know, it's just by grace, mm -hmm. really, that mm -hmm. um, calls are come to me. I get to work with Orbert Davis and, and the 60-piece 60, 60 jazz, you know, Philharmonic. Mm. Or, you know, I mm -hmm. just did the Chicago Jazz Fest. And, you know, and so and many opportunities have come because of my relationship with people at Columbia College. And, and it's just, um, it's, it's really a blessing. And so when I am discouraged and I'm saying, wow, I have to do homework, laundry, dinner, and so I'm not working on the album. I have I started an album almost two, three, I hate to say two, three years ago. I haven't mm -hmm. even gotten back to it. Right. And um, you know, it, it can be discouraging sometimes. Mm -hmm. It can. But uh, you know, sometimes I take my inspiration from my sisters that are out here doing it, like uh D. Alexander's mm -hmm. C D came out not too long ago. Mm -hmm. A girl young girl named Dana Lynn. D. Alexander has a new one? It's fairly new. I mean it maybe it's not considered new no. anymore. A year could pass I, and I well, wouldn't. Well I haven't had one. Well in D a year. and Dana Lynn, she is bad. Mm -hmm. And um my girl Ngochi and Sharice Scott, I think she always puts music out. But anyway, there are people that are getting it done. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, sometimes I have to use them for inspiration to say, okay. look back at my old CD and say, see, you know how to do this. You can do this. Just, just start. Right. You know, right. just get started. So right. I put one foot in front of the other. Right. And um, I saw you so over. Far. In fact, when I told somebody where I had been, they said, Dr. Peace, what you doing at the club? I wasn't where at the club. Which I one were went you? Room to here. here. I, no, we. We went to see uh, Chrisette Michelle. Oh my goodness! And you in Africa were there, right. and I we was sure there with my to daughter. Mm -hmm. Right, and so I'm looking at you, and I'm thinking, now what is Maggie doing here? Because Maggie was doing this, you know, you were doing the dramatizing the song, mm. you know, forever. So what? Why are all these people standing on this dance floor, packed in here like this? You know, like this is some new phenomenon, and and Maggie's over there dancing. You just bouncing up and down and dancing. Yes, and well, what have you? Now tell me what the appeal of Chrisette Michelle Chrisette is Michelle, for you. Chrisette Michelle, oh, she's bad. You could tell. I love. She even I says like in one lyrics. of her records. She's like, I studied Ella, Sarah, Natalie Cole. You know, she mm -hmm. has all those flavors. Mm -hmm. And I just from her first CD, I used to sing. Um, What's your definition of it? Love is you. And um, oh my goodness. So I just really enjoy her as an artist. I enjoy her singing. Mm -hmm. I enjoy the production. Mm -hmm. I, I really love the Epiphany album. Mm -hmm. And I was, I, in fact, I came to Epiphany, the Epiphany CD kind of late, you know. Mm -hmm. I started getting into all the cuts way later, m kind of recently. And so when I heard she was coming, I was like, oh, run, don't walk. 
But now the way it was presented, <laughs> like at the Alhambra, much like a, a House of Blues. No, I, I really don't like a concert where you have to stand up. I, and, I couldn't oh, believe no, it. I no, said, no. what And are, then the sound, the way the sound was. People, and I totally do not blame Chrisette. I totally do not blame Chrisette. You know, she probably knew that she wasn't coming on until 11, even though we were told 8. And, you know, she probably mm -hmm. always knew that, but she didn't know that we were being told that. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, promoters, venues. It, it, it is difficult. It, it can Why be. Do our it can be difficult to, to, to be presented properly. Why do our people tolerate going? You first of all stand in the line. Ooh, that line. And wait forever to get inside, and you and there are no seats. There are mm -hmm. no. I had called, and I found seats. out that extra ten dollars bought you a seat, and so we all bought our little seat. But you know the fact is there are plenty of people who paid the extra money, and when they got in that venue, there, there, there weren't were no any. Seats. There were no seats. There period. weren't no. any. We're not going to talk about that anymore. No, though. we're not going to no. talk about mm -hmm. it. But I was I was surprised to see you there because it was I more thought, of a young people's concert. Was that okay? I mean, is that why it was surprised to see me there? I was surprised because you know it would be kind of like seeing. Um, Duke Ellington at a Count Basie concert. Oh wow! You know, okay. yeah. I don't see, know if they I ever came and sat in, sat, sat in and watched each other. Each right, other right, right. You know, perform. Right. Well, one one girl has a record deal and national exposure and all kinds of accoutrements, and the other girl, you know. Okay. So there, there. I don't, I don't know that I'm in the Duke would count kind of. Uh, oh, you're not. You know, I don't not know Duke that I'm on. Count. As far as uh, okay. recognition in how the long, music industry. Okay. Now. How long? I, I love Chrisette Michelle's blaming yeah, well, on me. Yeah, what you doing that? Who, I love that. They, I, my grandson gave me Epiphany for Christmas. Okay. You know, and I love blaming on me. Right. And um, so and I like to see mom. her. I s like to see her perform it and dramatize in many ways she reminds me of you singing when she hmm. does that song because of the hmm. way that she really you know she moves and dramatizes mm -hmm. it and makes you feel the lyrics mm -hmm. um but of course there's some other stuff so you're a you fan know. and you went because you're a fan yeah, I, yeah I, I, my daughter her. took and she me. didn't do enough from that album did she to you? No. no and but you know the the thing was to we got there early Mm. And uh, the the thing was that long, arduous wait. I stood in that line. And people, and people, with all those people standing in the floor, in, on the floor, you could hardly see her. Right. You know, and so it was still a, talking about it. It was feel still uncomfortable. It was We're uncomfortable. We're still talking about it right. because obviously. I know I had high expectations and, and mm -hmm. they were not met. And I, again, I don't blame Chrisette at all. Mm -mm. It's just sometimes mm -hmm. I think as an artist, you can um, you can accept a gig, or even at, at right. that level, your management accepts the gig. Right. And you don't really necessarily no. know what the circumstances, the out atmosphere and you is going to be. Don't know for who the opening fans. acts are. Oh, that whole thing. See, we're still talking about it, but I, you know, because okay. I could go on a while about how that opening <laughs> act thing ended up. <laughs> okay. But anyway, it's well, not often. Okay. You said you were surprised to see me there, and boy, you won't see me in nothing like that again. Cause well, I promise. My daughter <laughs> said the only way to do it is to go to a no, concert where wait, they sell you a seat. Yeah, it's it's a it's a, a for real seat. Intimate concert mm -hmm, and you mm -hmm. came to listen when you do yours when you do abby mm -hmm. are you thinking of a venue are you thinking of one where there will be a seat to yeah. sit oh in? absolutely okay they okay. might be fold out chairs like they were at sherman park but there okay. will be seats so. okay no okay. no and uh, i hope to get it uh to have uh another opportunity to do it in chicago i'll do it in new york next year mm -hmm. next year okay at the schaumburg oh. and i oh. just hope more and more and more really the Women okay. in Jazz series at the Schaumburg. Okay. And that'll be March 21st, 2011. Oh, and you it's will a have the distance. But. You will have the audience. There is where you will have the audience. Makes a difference. Yeah. yeah. And that 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 you need that because you need that energy to mm -hmm. to, to blend with yours. Mm -hmm. So you're looking forward to that. I'm looking forward oh, to yeah. that too. Like I say, it's off in the distance, but I can't help it. Right. I can't help but look forward to it. Right. And Abby was once a woman there singing as a woman in jazz and, uh, and Dia Davenport and they you know, mentioned some other heavyweights have done this concert series that's always done in March at the Schaumburg in mm -hmm. Harlem. Mm -hmm. So um, to A, be you know, standing on those shoulders, sort of walking that path and in tribute to Abby mm -hmm. makes it 
extra special is at the Schomburg where Abby saw me and decided she wanted me to record with her. So there's just a lot of. I'm going to go back and it. look at a book I saw um, and I, I didn't have a chance to really get into it, but it's called Stormy Weather mm. and it's women in jazz. Okay. I want to see who's in there. Yeah. I want to see who mm. they actually, uh, you know, give as, you know, the women whose lives ought to be. Um, but that's the other thing. That's why you have to write too, mm -hmm. because, you know, maybe you could write a little vignette to go along with the, the, the concert the that you're going to go, mm -hmm. that you're going to do. Because mm -hmm. people want to know stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to know about the artist. They want to know why. They want to know about you, and they want right. to know why you chose to do to this, do and what mm -hmm. gives you the nerve, what makes you yeah, think. Yeah, you think you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just so happy that you were able to come and to perform, especially. I wanted you to, um, to have an opportunity to talk about yourself, you know, even though I do realize that you are, you know, are you the wind beneath Oscar's wings? And it's not, and I didn't make a mistake when I said that. It's not the other way around. He is not the wind beneath your mm -hmm. wings. When I think about my own children and how much time I spent away from home trying to uh, do something that I thought was socially. Change um, the world. Yeah, I was mm -hmm. trying to make the world a better, better place, place for them to grow yeah, yeah. up in. But I do realize, had it not for, been for the fact that my children. Uh, pretty much behaved themselves and didn't give me a real hard time mm -hmm. that I was able to do what I was mm -hmm. able to do. So mm -hmm. your children are the wind beneath your wings. Mm -hmm. They are not a burden. They're not millstones around mm -hmm. your neck, mm -hmm. but they are what gives you a reason, mm -hmm. you know, because why else are you trying to make the world better mm -hmm. if you don't have something in this world that you're trying to preserve mm -hmm. and your children are usually those people that you are trying mm -hmm. to preserve and that's yeah. why you See, your children are now the wind beneath your wings, and you have to do all kinds of wonderful things so you can show your appreciation for the blessing mm -hmm. that you have been given. Mm -hmm. So do you ever think you'll go back to school? Is that Oh, I need to. I actually, yes, I've, I've actually um, gone and talked to um, Mr. Dunskin at Columbia College because I do, I do need to go back. Mm -hmm. and just um, get that piece of paper, you know, mm -hmm. because I've had the success that I've had without even being able to say, well, I have a bachelor's. Mm -hmm. And so certain jobs and certain positions, you just can't, you're not even in discussion for without well, wait it. a minute. Hold on. Hold, hold on. on. Wait a minute. You know about university without walls? Oh, absolutely. Well, why are you going to talk about going? Well, because I was at Columbia, and Columbia, I like Columbia. I want you to they like Columbia. They would like, they, he, he, he talked about them liking to have people who are already in the profession to right. come back and right. they don't mind that. So I think they'll work with me okay. and I, I feel like the uh, the atmosphere there would be good. Right. And I'm just scared, you know, how can I do the mom thing and have a couple gigs and be in school and try to have a job where I teach? Okay. That's down to one day a week. Are they just... wanting you to come and actually sit in classes? Well, I'm sure there'd be some class attendance that would have to happen, but no. Surely there will be some, there's something that's called um, real life credit, something like that. That's what I'm saying. And so it's not to say you that have, I won't you have, have some You have life of that. experiences yeah, that ought to, to take you all the way through a bachelor's degree. Yeah. You know, with probably the, the, what you need is residency. There's every institution has a certain amount of hours that you need to take right. to say that you go to that institution. Right. Because they can't go around giving hand and standing on street corners passing Same, out you know, if you pay the degrees. Money, you're good, right? <laughs> they can't right. stand passing mm -hmm. out like leaflets right. on the corner, so you do have to show up. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think I I think that you ought to go back and you ought to talk to them and you ought to see what you can work out because you might be surprised that that's easier to do than you think it is. Mm -hmm. And don't forget to mention university without walls because yeah, all kinds of walls. people have credentials mm -hmm. that did not spend hours and hours and hours sitting in classrooms because okay. you got your education in the world that these, as your father told you mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. that yeah. This is what people Go were to going school. to school to oh. learn how to do what you were actually exactly. doing. So you can demonstrate. Mm -hmm. You can just lay down your experience and say, 
This, I have learned this course, the, the description of this right. course is this. I have learned all of this mm -hmm. by being this and this and this mm -hmm. and doing this and this wearing and these this. Hats. Yes, mm -hmm. wearing mm -hmm. all those hats. Yeah. And I'm looking forward, so I'll come to your graduation if you have one. Okay. <laughs> but good. if you don't have a graduation, I'll come to your show. Okay. Okay. Sounds so good. be sure to let us know when you're planning to, uh, you know, to go forward okay. with this. And, and, and I think you can, you can you reissue some CDs? Well, I actually have the same, the good old From My Window CD. I have that in stock, and I have We're the Live. live. I have them both, okay. and I sold some out at the Jazz Fest too a couple weekends ago. Okay. So I still have them with me, though there's no distribution for either product. And like I say, it's just time to make a new one. Isn't it time? Really and it's around the time of your and, father's and birthday. He, he, oh boy! And we said, my sister and brother and I, that uh, 10, 10, 10, October 10, 2010. Uh, Dad was born in 26, so he'd have been. Uh, 26 to what's that four don't ask me that's I don't yeah know I guess this numbers. would have been his 84th birthday okay and it's just something about 10 10 10 we really feel like we should be doing something for that but that re would require probably being a producer you know producing the show and you know making sure that I can get the band paid based on the audience coming out and you know I just I haven't been wearing the producer hat in a long time mostly I'll take engagements they ought where to be a tribute to Oscar Brown and just everybody done ought to come. Who they what? just yeah, who wouldn't? So if I put out the word All that the we're doing something, it's a world. Sunday, right? It's a Sunday, but yes, it's it's the oh, it's the Libra male uh, season because my father was a Libra male, born on the tenth, and my brother was born the eighteenth of October. Mm -hmm. And so, um, well, see yeah, I, it is it is that season. I'm planting a seed. Thank you. Hope it will grow. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, I'll take it and Maggie. water it. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs>